In this final section, we're going to talk about how to create user controls and how to define and use those user controls within pages. So a user control is simply a piece of commonly used user interface code and the controls in HTML that might go with it that you might want to reuse and share across multiple pages in a given website. Now you can register these controls within a page and then it'll pick those up at runtime. So if you've ever done an include file with other frameworks where you have a file that you want to include dynamically at runtime, that would be very analogous to a user control. Now examples of this include login screens that might go across multiple pages, uh, headers or footers that you just wanted to find that once and then that way you have one place to go to update, for instance, something as simple as the copyright. Or maybe you have menus and the menu you also would like to share across multiple pages. Now the way that these work is we use a new directive that we haven't talked about up to this point. We did talk about the page directive and how that works. Well with user controls it's not a full page. It's a user control. In fact it's going to even inherit from a class called user control. So what we'll do is in our pages we'll add in this percent at which is a directive and then say hey this is going to be a control and then we'll give it the language. Now the file extension that you'll create is an ASCX. So up to this point everything we've done has been ASPX. But with user controls you can do ASCX. Then of course you'll have to reference that ASCX file within your ASPX, your web form files, and then work with those. So let's take a look at an example of creating and then def defining and importing user controls into our web forms pages. Let's assume that we'd like to create a header or a footer and add it into our existing web pages, but we don't want to cut and paste and duplicate that code across the pages. Well, fortunately, that's very, very easy to do with ASP.NET using user controls. So to create a user control, what I normally like to do is create a separate folder, and I'll just call it user controls. Now, you just certainly don't have to do that, but I think it makes it easier to find these and keep them separate from your full pages, your ASPX uh, pages. So I'm going to right click, we'll say add new item, and you'll see that we can do a web user control. You'll notice the extension down here is an ASCX for control. So let's call, call this header.ascx. Now from here on out it's very much like designing a regular standard web form. We can drag and drop, we can use server controls, we can do all that magic, and then when we're done we can reference this control in our ASPX pages. So to start off though, let's look at the control directive. So you can see the language is set. Uh, some events are wired up, for instance, page load. Here's the code behind, so we do have code separation. Here's our code file right there. It looks very similar. The main difference being we don't inherit from page. We actually inherit from user control. And then we have the inherits, which says the header class should be inherited from, and that can be found right there. So now, whatever we put in this control will be encapsulated, and we can now reuse it across this particular web application. So let's assume that we just want to do a little header. We'll put something like Acme Corp. And maybe I want to go ahead and wrap that with a div. We'll just add some inline styles to keep it quick. All right, we can go to design view. Everything looks good there. And let me just space over just a little bit. And let's say we also want to put the current date over here as well. So we can drag on a label control. And we'd probably want to align it right or something, but I'm going to go ahead and just add the code. We'll come into here. And because I didn't give it a name, it'll be something like label one dot text equals, and we'll do date time dot now to long date string. Now that will automatically update that label just like we've been doing throughout the different modules up to this point. Just like you would do on a page as well. So we can come in and I'm going to cheat and do it this way instead of doing a float just to get it to work. Now you'll notice I can't right click and view in browser though. Likewise I can't come over here and right click and view in browser. 
The reason for that is it's only part of a page. It's not the whole page. So as a result, uh, we can't just right click and run it. There isn't a body tag and an HTML tag and all that. Going back to the source, it's just very basic source you can see. What I'm going to do now is let's go ahead and build. Make sure we're OK there. Looks like we are. And now what I'd like to do is add a reference to this user control into my form, my default.aspx. And just as a reminder, this is the one that has the, the first name, last name, and all that type of stuff in it. So how do we do that? Well, it's actually very, very simple. What I'm going to do is create a new row right above. So we'll insert row above. And in this row, I'm going to go ahead and we can go in and, and modify our cells. I'm going to merge them so that we just have one cell there. And now all I have to do is grab my file, my header, and we can just drop it in. And you'll notice that it automatically renders. And then from here, I can edit the user control to go right to it. So it's actually very handy, very easy to use. Now this just saved us quite a bit of code by dragging and dropping in this case, because we would have to do another directive called register to register the path to the user control, the namespace, and then give it what's called a tag name. So let me show you how that works. So if we go into the source, another directive has been added called register. And this is used with registering user controls. Now the register has three things you have to specify on it in the case of user controls. And that is what's the source. So what's the path uh, to this particular control? What's the tag name? Now, this can be anything you want. In fact, the next two can be anything you want. But because we called it header, we're going to call the tag for this header. It's very much like when you do a label, you do ASP colon label. Well, label is like the tag name. In this case, we're going to name it the same as the class header. Now, tag prefix references the path to it and the namespace that we'll ultimately be using in this path. So it's just a prefix to let us know this is a custom control that we're going to embed in the page. Now in this case, I'm going to change it to user controls since that makes a lot of sense. And we'll come down here and we'll simply change this to user controls in this example. So now we have a way to, with the combination of the prefix and the tag name reference this particular file which internally has a namespace and a class and again you can name these whatever you want though it doesn't have to equate or match up with the class or the namespace but I like to usually keep them very similar makes more sense so now we have user controls colon header very much like we do with ASP colon and then we put label now this is not a web server control because it's just an ASCX file. It's not actually a full on web control that derives from a class called web control or control. Instead, it's a custom user control that simply references the ASCX, of course. But you'll notice we do have to put run at server. This is a server side control. JavaScript, the client side browser in general would have no idea what to do with the control directive or the label tag it needs to be rendered at the server side. So now that we've embedded that directly in our page, we can go ahead and run it. And now we'll see that our header shows up right at the top. Our dynamic code runs to write out the, the date in this case. And then we can fill out the form. I hit submit. Everything else functions as is because this is just a part of the page. Now, likewise, in the grid view demo here, if we wanted to drag and drop it inside of here, then I can come over. I'm just going to hit enter there. I can drag it up in. It renders it. And now when I run it, we'll get the same exact thing. And now if I want to change something, let's say we don't want to uh, do the date. We want to do the time for some reason. Let's do too short time string. And now when we run it, you'll see that it updates across all our pages because, of course, we're sharing it, much like an include file. So there we go. And we'll come back to the grid view, view in the browser here. Very nice. Now, the last little uh, tip I'd like to share is there may be times when you want to dynamically add the user control into what we call the control collection of a page. 
Now that can be done as well. All we really need to know is the path to the user control, which uh, we have here. So let me show you an example of doing that. Let's say that we have a new web form. So I'm just going to add new item. Uh, we'll go back up to web form. Web form one works for me. And let's say that we'd like to, within the form called form one, we want to dynamically add this user control. Very easy to do that. Now keep in mind, user controls, although I'm doing a header or a footer, or we could do a menu, they could be used for anything. It could be grids. It could be a, a grid with filtering controls above it that you need to share across pages. So kind of the sky's the limit here. Now what I'm going to do though is let's say that we have this is some text and then this is some other text. Let's say we want to add the user control right between these two. Well we can do that pretty easy. I'm going to assume we had a, a BR tag here for a line break. And then right inside of this I'm going to add what's called a placeholder control. We're going to give it an ID of, we'll just call this header placeholder. And we have to do run at server, of course. Now, a placeholder does what it says. It just simply reserves some space in the controls collection. If you don't put anything in it, nothing happens on the client side. This is a server side only tag that allows you to add children into it. And if you do, they'll get rendered and added to the HTML. So now what we'll do is we'll come back into our code and when the page loads I can go find that control and add to it so we can come in and say header placeholder dot and then we can say controls dot add and I'm gonna create a control here so the way I'm gonna do that is we're gonna say var ctl equals page dot load control and load control takes the virtual path to get to our in this case header so I'm going to give it the path that we have. I'm going to make sure we can find it though. So I'm going to say start at the root of the site. That's what the tilde means. Go down from that into the user controls folder and then find the header. Once we find that, load control adds, uh, returns a control. And now we can go ahead and add that control dynamically into the placeholder. So let's go ahead and build and try this out. So we'll come down to web form one ASPX and you can see it added it just as we expected right between the text so I hope your apps will look a little better than this one but you get the idea this could be a dynamic report that gets added anything that's reusable that's a user control and so all we have to do is call page dot load control to do that so to wrap up this demonstration of user controls we've talked about how we can right click and add a new item and select web user control and that they have ASCX extensions. Once you've filled in the programming logic, if any, and the user interface code, including web controls, into that ASCX, then we can simply drag and drop from the Solution Explorer into our page where we need that and that's all you have to do. You're in business at this point. Then the final thing we just covered, of course, is how do you dynamically load user controls? And so page.loadUserControl is your kind of gateway to doing that. And that's something I've, uh, on, depending on the application, have leveraged quite a bit when I had some dynamic controls that I want to add into the page based upon, for instance, user security. So that's a wrap up on how we can use user controls in ASP.NET Web Forms.